This is KGW News at Noon. It was a violent weekend in Portland. In just 24 hours, there were two shootings, two stabbings as well, all four of them deadly. Hello, I'm Christine Pitawanich. We spoke with Portland police about the four deaths that happened in such a short time span. The truth is when they all happen in such a short period of time, it compounds. Uh, the impact compounds all of us here in the community. I think any of us that live here, that work here, that love Portland, um, you know, this is unacceptable. This is not the Portland that we want or know. That's Police Sergeant Kevin Allen. Now we want to break down all four incidents that police had to deal with this weekend. Let's start with the shootings. The first happened about two o'clock in the morning on Friday on Southeast 148th between East Burnside and Stark Streets. That's in the Hazelwood neighborhood. The victim died at the hospital. Officers arrested a man Friday night and he faces multiple charges, including murder. Then early Saturday, one person was killed in a shooting near Northeast Sandy and 162nd. This one happened in the Wilkes neighborhood just before 1.30 in the morning. Officers say that person died at the scene and no arrests have been made. Also, we mentioned two deadly stabbings. Those both happened in Old Town on Friday. The first on West Burnside and Northwest 23rd just before noon. Officers arrested Dorian Cannon, a homeless man with a long history of charges. He's in the Multnomah County Jail charged with murder. The second stabbing happened about 830 Friday night near Northwest Broadway and Cooch. Officers arrested Khalil Ford. He's also in the Multnomah County Jail charged with murder. Meantime, a deadly crash on Southwest Shoals Ferry Road caused about 750 power outages, which have since been restored. The Multnomah County Sheriff's Office says the crash happened at about 2.30 yesterday morning. Deputies arrived to find the car engulfed in flames. Portland Fire put it out and found the driver dead inside. The cause is under investigation. Now to some of your local headlines this noon. More than 50 people discovered their car tires slashed on Saturday in Portland's Roseway neighborhood. This happened mainly along Northeast 72nd and Northeast 77th Avenue. Whoever did it even left threatening handwritten notes on some cars, discouraging people from calling the city. Portland police are asking anyone who is targeted to file a police report and to turn in any photos or videos of the person who may be responsible. Today, Portland City Commissioner Mingus Maps is expected to release his plan for changing the city's government structure. The plan is different from the changes that are already on the table and up for a vote this November. According to the Oregonian, Maps' proposal would divide the city into seven districts and each would elect just one council member. It would also give the mayor the power to veto council legislation. And gas prices, you may have noticed in Portland, they've increased by about 50 cents in just the last week. That's according to the latest report from Gas Buddy. The average price in the city is now at $5.48 per gallon. That's $1.73 higher than this time last year. The national average has also gone up. It's now $3.78 a gallon, with an increase of 11 cents in the last week. And those are some of your local headlines. The Portland Marathon was back in full force yesterday. About 7,000 runners ran through neighborhoods on both sides of the city for the 50th edition of the race. Tim Gordon takes us to the big event with a start and finish line along the waterfront. All set before dawn and everything ready to go for the 50th Portland Marathon. And then a sunrise start with the front of the pack leading the way. The marathoners up for 26.2 miles across bridges and through 20 Portland neighborhoods, and a large contingent of half marathoners too. They all had support, including encouraging signs and, of course, the cowbells. This woman really had the bell ringing down. We're super pumped up right now. Energy, uh, runners and supporters are out in droves. It's, uh, it's wild out there. It's a lot of fun and uh, we're feeling great. As marathon runners came back by at the eight mile mark, they got a boost from the crowd. And not long after, the top half marathon runners crossed the finish line. Our half marathon winner, Chris Maxwell. 109.12 unofficially. Both the male and female first place winners, Portlanders, tuning up for a California full marathon later this year. Chris Maxwell, 
having it be a local race for me is just easy logistically, getting to sleep in my own bed. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a good tune-up race. And Kara Welling, who is originally from the Southwest. No rain, beautiful sun, a great time. Is it too warm for you? No, I'm from Arizona, so it's not too warm here for me. <laughs> In the two hour and 37th minute, marathon man Matt Spear went around the winner's tape, but still took first place. It's hot, man. Uh, that's about all I can say. Good, a lot of good people out and friends and family on the course. and. Uh, uh, coming, came in from Seaside, so not used to the warm weather, but uh, yeah, good vibes and, and good times. Tim Gordon, KGW News. We have had a long tradition and we love doing this for the community. So it brings us together and then it brings everybody together. So it's just like a double benefit of community. The 69th annual Portland Greek Festival happened over the weekend in Northeast. People enjoyed music, dancing, and of course, some really amazing food. The Greek Festival was on hold, though, for two years because of COVID, but a whole lot of people so excited that it is back. Whew, I'm getting hungry. That looks delicious. <laughs> okay, taking you outside real quick for a look from our Rose City Sky Cam, a beautiful blue, I was going to say blue sky, blue bird, one of the two, both of them type of day. It's beautiful out. Now let's get to Rod. Rod, it is warm for October. Is it even October? Uh, I, oh, I know. Uh, what's today going to be, Christine? The 10th consecutive day that at PDX we will easily be above normal in the temperature department. The record today is 86. We could get close to that this afternoon. Most of our cameras are sunny ones. Here's the Oregon Veterans Home camera in the Dalles looking at the city and the Columbia River. Winds are calm in the gorge right now and they will be throughout the day. 74 Upper 80s expected view folks out in Wasco County. The one spot that is cloudy and may not see the sun up and down a good chunk of the coast. This is our Schneckwinds Casino Resort camera in Lincoln City. It is uh, 60 degrees. Winds are light though all areas and here's a different vantage point of downtown. This one looking at the Portland Spirit landing and, and the Tilcom Crossing. Not a cloud in the sky. It will stay that way the rest of today. We're at 66. I think we will get a big warm up at least hitting 80. Maybe going as warm as 84. Again, the record's 86, 72 degrees at 8 o'clock. You know, September was another record month. The water year is now in the books. Uh, we started a brand new water year on October 1st, and we'll talk about those details coming up in just a bit. Okay, thank you, Rod.